Welcome everyone to our HFMA 2019 Annual Conference Speaker Webinar. We're excited to provide you with some tools and tips and answer any questions you have about presenting at the Annual Conference. My name is Sue Spear. I'm HFMA's Director of Education. And I'm going to kick things off by just walking through our agenda and let you know what we're going to talk about for the next 45 minutes or so. Um, I also have with me my colleague, Nora McLaughlin, who many of you have been in correspondence with. Nora is our coordinator of everything related to speakers and presentations for the annual conference. So in terms of our agenda, what we're hoping to get through is talk a little bit about what's new and new-ish this year. We're going to talk about our role as HFMA resources and our commitment to helping you make, the be make this the best experience possible. We're going to talk a little bit about your role and your commitment and responsibilities as you prepare for the conference. We're going to walk through some timelines. And then we're going to do a little bit of question and answer if you have any questions that aren't answered yet. This presentation is being recorded, so if you need to refer back to it after you listen to it, we will send you a link and that will allow you to get in and, and re-review anything that you would like to. When we talk about what's new and newish this year, one of the things we started using last year, which we felt was very successful, was polling and Q&A technology. We have a great partner called Conferences.io. It is a, um, it's part of our mobile app, and it will appear within your session on the mobile app. What it does is it allows you to ask polling questions of the audience. It also allows the audience members to ask a question. What's great about the technology is um, it allows you, when you're building your presentation, to first of all engage folks. By participating in polls, they not only are able to tell you a little bit about themselves, but they also see where folks in the room are in terms of um, organization, in terms of knowledge level, in terms of things that they're concerned about. So we're happy to help out in any way you need in designing some polling questions to include in there. Those are embedded directly into your PowerPoint presentation. And Nora will do that as we talk through the submission process for you submitting your presentations. We use um, the technology and embed those into the presentation. I know sometimes when we talk about using technologies in presentations, folks get a little bit nervous. But we've tried this technology multiple times. We've used it at really all of our events for the last year and a half. And we're, we're very pleased with the way it works. And anybody who has presented for us before and used it knows it gives you some great input into um, what your audience is thinking and what things they're interested in. One of the things we've had folks use it for in the past is, at the beginning, all of you have created learning objectives for the session. One thing that's a, a good thing to kick off with, perhaps, is ask people out of those learning objectives which is the most important. And they can vote on that, and you'll be able to see that in real time. And that allows you to kind of adapt on the fly when you see what the I guess most pressing issues for the audience are. The questions can be multiple choice. They can be true-false. The other thing we have a lot of fun with is you can create a word cloud. It allows you to ask a question with a one-word answer, and people will type it in, and it will create one of those nice word clouds. The data is available on the back end, and we can supply that to you after the fact if you're interested in that, but that is a tool that we are very excited to make available to you as presenters. So in terms of what is 
are, are we going to let them go through the technology, you think? Or sure, I can kind of walk You want to walk through? people through? We've sure. got a sample question or two. So Laura? if you do have your cell phones with you, if you want to load this, um, this link into your browser, it's hfmaac.dns.io. And what this shows you is that how the questions come up on the attendee's cell phone. And it shows you on the screenshot, too. And if you want to submit questions for polling, I ask that you submit them like this on your slide deck so I'll know that it's a polling question. And if you do want it, start um, typing in your question or the answer to this question. We can kind of test it out and you can see on your smartphone what it looks like. Great, we have a couple responses. So we have 37% of you have presented before and 33 have not. So that's a good mixture. And so that will show up on the screen too. Unfortunately, we cannot um, show it the live results um, in this format that we're presenting today, but that what you show on your cell phone is what will be projected on the screen um, instead of this gray slide. But as I mentioned before, if you do want to use our polling, just please submit the question in um, just like this, and I will uh, format it into our software polling, and it will show up like this in your uh, slides. Move to the next slide. Sue? So in terms of what's new this year, other than the polling technology, as you can see, we have a big, bold theme. Our theme is Be Bold. It's a call to action to the industry where we are looking to provide folks with those tools they need to boldly lead their organization into the future. The other part that we're going to walk through is our brand new HFMA Central area. That is, as a sneak peek, that is our former exhibit hall. And we're going to show you some of the fun things in a minute that we've got going on in there. We've got learning pathways, workshops, the pre-conference workshops. We have our cohort tracks. We have our breakout, breakout tracks and our case studies. We also are continuing with Executive Connections. This is a great way for folks that want to attend the conference to participate in discussions with some of our exhibitors and also receive a significant discount. Actually, it's a complimentary registration to the conference. And finally, we're changing up the last day of the conference a little bit this year. Rather than ending with the case study sessions on Wednesday morning, we are still going to run those, but we're going to start those at the 8 o'clock hour and end with a closing keynote. We're thrilled to have Susan Denser, who is a um, health policy expert, who's going to give a closing keynote address and talk about a roadmap for reinventing health care. Again, we think that's a great way to end the conference and keep folks there is to have her talk about, okay, now you've heard all of these great things. You've all been together for two and a half, three days. Where do we go from here going forward? And finally, the other thing we're going to be able to do with that is include a great video highlight of next year's location, which is going to be San Antonio. That's going to be our first conference that is um, outside of the Vegas Orlando rotation that we've had over the last few years. So we really feel like that final day of the conference is going to go out with a real bang and again, be bold. I talked a little bit about what be bold means. It means leading change. The audience we're going to talk about in a few minutes of the annual conference. We, they are the leaders in and the executives in the healthcare finance space. We want to give folks the tools they need, and that's part of 
our responsibility as HFMA and also your responsibility and challenge as speakers is to give them the tools they need to lead change, to design tomorrow for your organization to make that transformation to something that is going to be sustainable, thriving, and vibrant. And it's also an opportunity to invite participants to invest in themselves, in their professional development, in their networking, in their um, professional skills and um, other development tools that they're going to need. Talked a little bit about HFMA Central. Again, it's, it's really a transformation of what used to be the exhibit hall. We've listened to the feedback that we've received from attendees. A lot of folks feel intimidated. The exhibit hall got very large. There were um, large booths. We've heard it referred to in some cases as a circus atmosphere with you know, every type of um, enticement for folks to come visit some of the exhibitors. What we've really done is gone back to the exhibitors and also looked at the feedback from attendees and said, what is going to make that space more comfortable for folks? What is going to make them want to go there? What is going to make them want to stay there? And um, any time that they are not in education sessions that are outside of HFMA Central, want to make them come back. In fact, we've even created the trail of breadcrumbs, if you will, and included two education stages within HFMA Central that are going to offer content in the innovation area as well as the leadership area. We're going to feature our innovation hub which is a contest among startup companies that um, are going to be able to showcase some of their innovations. We'll have executive roundtables that many, that many attendees are going to be invited to attend. They'll have executive level questions um, that are going to be asked of them and their peers that are kind of small group meetings. We're going to have food and beverage stations. and. Um, interesting cuisine that's going to invite people to come in and sit down and share a snack with their friends and get off their feet for a few minutes. As I mentioned, we're going to have education stages. We're very excited at these stages themselves. They're, I did not include a picture of them, but they're going to be very unusual structures that we feel are going to be very inviting to have people come in and listen to education presentations that are eligible for CPE. We're going to offer one of our sponsored assets is going to be headphones for folks that are going to be able to listen to presentations that are on those stages and not be distracted by the ambient noise. We're going to have specialty coffee stations and we're going to have our receptions on Sunday and Monday nights that are going to be in HFMA Central. So we're really excited about that. And as you can see, this is kind of a thumbnail sketch. Those, that middle section is going to be where the executive connection discussions are going to go on. And then at either side, we've got the education stages. And we've substantially cut down on the number of booths and also limited the size of booths to a manageable level so that everybody gets the most mileage from their time spent in HFMA Central. So we're excited to see it. We're excited for you all to see it and participate in it. We talked a little bit about learning pathways. Last year was our real first effort at really making a concerted effort to be more engaging with participants by creating more interactive sessions. We started that overall by changing our seating for sessions. If you recall anybody who's either been to the conference or presented over the years, we used to cram as many folks as we could into theater style seating and then have PowerPoint after PowerPoint of 
essential information, but not necessarily engaging conversations. We've really changed that, again, beginning last year by listening to attendees tell us that they learn not only from you all as speakers up at the stages, but also from their peers. And we've encouraged speakers to cultivate discussions within your presentation. We've got the pathways that go through conference workshops, which we've traditionally held to kick off the annual conference. We have our cohorts, which are curated themes, if you will. We have two cohort tracks each day. In addition, we have six breakout tracks each day. And then again, we're ending the conference with case studies. We really found that people appreciate that case study approach, especially at the end of the conference when they've heard a lot of information about different topics. A case study lets you roll up your sleeves a little bit more and look at through the lens of one or two organizations what their performance challenges, opportunities, and successes have been, and then leave with some real tools on how to leverage those tools at your organization. I hope you've all had a chance to look on the website at the schedule at a glance. This lays out what is going on through each of the time frames throughout the conference. And again, you see we're highlighting HFMA Central as part of that schedule, but we also have a listing of the blocks of time when folks are going to be in different types of sessions. I know one of the biggest questions is who is the audience for the annual conference? Our primary audience is still hospital and health systems. We also have other non-providers, advisors, physician practice and other care providers, business partners, and health plans. For those who have been involved with HFMA for any length of time, our real theme over the last five to seven years has been that what we call internally our three circles approach, that you know Venn diagram, if you will, of we really all need to collaborate within the industry to move forward. It's got to be the healthcare finance executives, the physicians and other clinicians, as well as the health plans that all work together for the benefit of those that are receiving care. While our audience for the annual conference is primarily hospitals and health systems, we do ask as you put your presentation together that you take, kind of look at the information that you're providing through that lens of collaboration. If there's an opportunity for you to ask the question of yourself or um, your presenting partners, okay, this is a provider-centric viewpoint, but what would that mean or what would that look like for those that are in a health plan environment, or what would that look like for those in a more clinical session, or for a chief medical officer. In addition to the setting, we also look at the function of where the attendees come from. We have a fair number that are our business partners. The largest segment, but not by a lot, is finance and accounting, kind of the traditional um, financial executives. The revenue cycle is another large segment, administrative and operations, and then finally decision support and IT. And frankly, I suspect that that decision support and IT function is going to grow over the years as AI and um, other types of technologies take play a larger and lar larger role in the industry. And finally, we look at level. Who participates in the annual conference? Largest is mid-level, those director folks, managers. We also have 
um, CFO and executive audience is about 30% of the audience. And we are looking at more and more early careerists and those just beginning their journey as valuable additions to the audience of the annual conference. I took, talked a little bit about moving away from the um, PowerPoint presentation as the sole means of getting that information out to the audience. And one of the things when we talk about resources available, we had a great third party um, partner that we brought in last year to do some webinars for us that we have available on the Speaker Resource Center. And she talked a lot about the nuts and bolts of how you make presenter presentations more interactive. But I'm going to talk today a little bit about your role as a facilitator of learning. We're hoping that you'll kind of look at this roadmap of how people learn. They want a concrete experience. They want time to think about it and reflect on it. They want to take something more abstract and kind of try it out in real life. So as you define your content that you're going to impart in your session, we want you to really think about and, and think about it from the audience perspective. What do they what need to know versus what don't they need to know? And we'll talk a little bit about satisfiers and dissatisfiers in a minute, but really boil down the key of what's that critical piece that you want people to leave with and be able to do process improvements. We want you to do at what we call active learning. People learn more when they're able to mull over an idea, talk about an idea with their peers, think about things, and try out concepts. Again, that idea we really don't want to um, rely overly heavily on PowerPoint. We want to encourage peer-to-peer -peer conversations, and we want to encourage that interaction with attendees. It is about them and what they can take back to their organizations. When we talk about the interactive piece, again, um, the webinars that Sarah did last year are available on the Speaker Resource Center. She gives some really good tips about how you can intersperse that interaction with attendees. We talked about one being polling and being able to use those polling results to maybe adjust some of your discussion in your presentation on the fly. Other, organ other presenters have had good success with, you know, maybe there's a logical point within your presentation that you enable folks to spend a short period of time. It doesn't have to be lengthy, but maybe give them five minutes to discuss at their tables how they're going to apply a situation or what some challenges they see to a particular point that you've presented would be. And you don't have to do a formal report out. You just maybe give folks um, an opportunity if anybody would like to share. We will have handheld microphones that will be available. We will have um, course coordinators and other staff members that are available to um, act as runners for that. We have the mobile app Q&A function that allows people to um, present something in the app and type it in rather than doing, I know some people may look at table discussions and say you're going to eat up 15 minutes with a report out, but it, it can be a very simple tool that we'll work with you on if that's something that's appealing to you. The other thing we ask you is to focus your session content on a forward-looking view rather than kind of recapping what's in the rear view mirror. It's very tempting to try to level set by presenting information that um, talks about the state of the industry, but I think, as we'll see in a minute when we talk about some of the satisfiers and dissatisfiers, folks are pretty familiar. There are a lot of information sources out there that they can get their um, daily dose of 
information on what's going on in the industry. I think there there needs to be an assumption of certain base knowledge. People really don't want to spend 10 minutes talking about um, definitional type things, the history of where certain things came from. They want to move on to, okay, what's actionable, what's new, and what do I need to do? In terms of attendee expectations, we've talked about that a little bit already. They want These are some comments that we received from last year's annual conference. They, the things they appreciate are things that are timely, engaging, and supported by data. Folks like the table exercises and being able to interact with their peers. Good information. Take-home items are the gems, whether it's a checklist, whether it's a um, here's what you do and do not in your path going forward. The other thing is being prepared. Speakers and materials were well prepared. Valuable takeaways and tools were provided. Those are things, again, we hear time and time again for sessions that were rated highly. Attend the expectations of what they do not want. We talked a little bit about being too basic and nothing new to share. Sales pitches for particular technologies are a definite detractor from the message. And, it, and we will review all the presentations for these do nots. And if we see things that are red flags in our mind, we will, pre, we will um, get those back to you and suggest modifications. The other thing is um, they want clear learnings and takeaways from experts. Speakers were knowledgeable but very dull, no energy. I think that's something important to think about as you put your session information together. All of you are presenting because you have a passion about something. Don't be afraid to let your passion show in your presentation and in your speaking. You're doing this because you feel you have an important message that you want to share with folks. So please try to think about what's important about what you're saying. Now, I did this um, on this last slide. I said, it says, you may not be able to read it. Slides <laughs> hard to read. White letters with gray background. Too busy with too much detailed information. When I popped that into the, um, into the uh, form there, I thought, wow, this is really hard to read. But yes, that's what we actually see sometimes in material that's turned in. What I would suggest, it's easy to develop slides, and we've been guilty of it ourselves at HFMA, is um, run it as a slideshow in your conference room at your organization. Don't just look at it on your screen as a small presentation. Those, the rooms at annual conference are pretty good size. We're going to be blowing up these slides to a pretty good size and we want to make sure that they're readable and that things translate. We're giving you the um, 16 by 9 uh, widescreen format because of the screens we're using on site. So we really do want you to run that through and make sure that everything is readable. Again, use PowerPoint wisely. Limit your background information and assume base knowledge. Pay attention, as we just talked about, to fonts, colors, and graphics. We do hear a lot of pushback when there's a ton of information that everyone is trying to cram onto a PowerPoint slide. There is an appendix you can, you can create where we can make that available on the mobile app that people can have as background. Um, any reports you have. Sometimes Excel spreadsheets or graphs are difficult to read. So they, those can be attached as reports or as an appendix. Use some interesting visuals. Some of the best presentations we've seen have very, very limited text, but really interesting visuals that are going to convey a message to folks. We ask if you do use visuals that you cite them with proper attribution. 
And we also ask it, it, uh, that you alert us if you plan to use either audio or video. One of the biggest challenges we have is video, and the biggest one of the bigger challenges is embedding a YouTube video. We need to go back, and if you want to use a YouTube video, we have ways we can actually embed that in the PowerPoint, because otherwise what you're doing is within that enormous presentation space, first of all, you're relying on sometimes Wi-Fi to reach out and grab that YouTube video, but also you're going to get that sometimes commercial pop-up that allow that is going to force you to listen to a commercial for the first five or ten seconds before you get right into the video. So we can help with that. That's one of the resources we're willing to offer. I just threw in a couple of um, examples of please do not do this in the uh, video, or I'm sorry, in the PowerPoint of very, very busy slides. I'll pop it to mm -hmm. the next one. There are actually um, some charts that came frighteningly close to this. And HFMA ourselves is guilty. We always use one of the slides that we created probably five or six years ago, and I am willing to bet it's probably still in circulation somewhere talking about our value project. But this is not going to be something that folks are going to be able to read from the back of the room. And, you know, I... We, we actually hear speakers say when they're up there, well, this is not going to be easy for anybody to read, but we wanted to include it anyway. Again, there's other ways to get that information across. Now that we've talked a little bit about kind of the background of putting your material together, I'm going to turn it back over to Nora, and she's going to review some of the dates and some of the tasks that we're asking for your help in achieving. So go right ahead, Nora. Sure. So all of you received your speaker agreements, and those can be signed and sent back to me. I did get quite a few in, so thank you. Also, while you're registering for the conference, you can also make your hotel reservations, and we ask that you do that sooner than later because those hotels do fill up. And then we also ask you to make your reservations within the HFMA hotel block um, that way that you will get um, the reimbursement for your hotel. And the presentations are due May 17th. So this gives us enough time, like Sue said, um, in case there's any videos that need to be embedded, I can work on that. Also, I can work on the polling questions. Um, and that's just important just because if you do show up on site with any changes, it does take a while for me to make those and we're not guaranteed that those will be made before your presentation if you do show up on site. So May 17th gives us enough room for us to review your presentations, get it back to you and that you can look over, and then if we make any suggestions for those suggestions to be changed. Also I included the program guide that goes to press, to press on May 9th. That just to let you know that this is the on-site program guide. So if you do have any changes to speakers, um, please let me know. Or if you have any job title changes, please let me know just so that they are made into this program guide because, like I said, those do go to press on May 9th. And I did get a question in about how many polling questions can we have within our presentation. I would think that as much as probably what soon you think about four or five would be good? Yeah, probably. That's probably the limit I would do. I mean, you can put as many as you like, but with it, it depends on the amount of time. Some folks are doing a workshop, and that's, that's a little bit longer time frame. You obviously have more time to do more, but yeah, somewhere between for an hour, an hour and a half presentation, or hour and 15 minute, or hour, Three to five is probably good. Okay, good. And so also what happens is that we turn your presentations into PDFs and load them onto the conference website and the app so attendees have access to get that. So we do ask that those will go out on May, or June 18th. That gives the attendees enough time to download it, 
print it off off-site, bring it to the conference. We get this question a lot from attendees that start calling looking for the presentations and how to download it. So we like to have it available probably a week prior to the conference, so June 18th, that's when our deadline is to have them all posted on our website and app. And then after the conference, your expense reports could be submitted by July 31st, and that goes strictly to me. Um, that is the speaker reimbursement form, which I also included with your agreements and also the guidelines. And everything is stored on the speaker resource webpage. Um, so that has the forms with the guidelines on reimbursement, um, hotel and regist uh, registration information, the PowerPoint template. Um, Presentation upload instructions, we will go over that shortly. Also, it has the polling uh, tool information, and it will have this recording, this webinar recording, along with two others that Sue mentioned that we did prior um, with content design that could give you some ideas of what we're looking for. Also, a speech, uh, social media kit. And I believe that... Um, is the next slide that I'll cover. So it's always good to promote if you're speaking. Uh, we like to include either social posts for Twitter or even an email signature line, or you can use this on your LinkedIn page. So we created um, a couple of these, and those will be on the speaker resource webpage as well. And that just, like I said, gives you a chance to promote yourself, to let people know that you're speaking, and kind of give you free advertisement about how good you are and how many people want to see you speak at the conference. Um, so like I said, I will follow up with an email with this recording and the speaker resource webpage link that um, can take you directly to this page. We kind of have it hidden on our website just so um, the attendees can't just look for it because we do, like I said, have the con uh, registration, the comp code on there as well. So. I will send out an email after this with the link to this resource page. And it has a bunch of information. Again, if you need anything else, you can always email me directly. Do you want to go over presentation information? Or? Sure. We've, we've covered a lot of it so far. But again, the deadline we're asking for is May 17th. And I know fo some folks are going to ask for who are doing kind of the updates a um, little bit more time closer to the conference, but ideally we'd really like to get these presentations in in time so that we can review them and return them with any suggestions we might have. We do have a great team of subject matter experts within HFMA. We kind of divide it up by content area and they look this over and I think those of who have presented before would agree they provide really valuable feedback where they say, you know, this is an area that folks really want to hear more about. Can you elaborate on that? And we'll ask you to maybe um, redirect some um, discussions, if you will, or they can offer suggestions for this would be a really good time to let the audience discuss for five minutes about a particular topic, but we want to be able to have them review the presentations, get you comments back, and give you sufficient time to make any adjustments that you think are necessary. So with that, the other piece that we want to talk about today is how you get those presentations to HFMA. And um, one thing we're trying to avoid by creating this presentation management system. Justin is going to talk about that in a minute. I'll let Nora introduce him. But what we're trying to avoid, as, as you can tell, the PowerPoint template is very graphic rich. In fact, one of the reasons we were a little bit late in starting this presentation is we've, we've had some issues with emailing things back and forth simply because of the graphics that are within the PowerPoint template. What we're trying to avoid is passing a lot of emails with attachments of PowerPoint presentations back and forth. We're giving you a new and wonderful 
opportunity to get this directly into what's called our presentation management system. And it's going to, I think, simplify everybody's life dramatically so that we can get that information into the hands of our AV team. And then all you really need to do is walk into the, into the room and um, look at your presentation and it'll be all preloaded already. So with that, Nora, I don't know if you want to introduce sure. Justin. Sure. Uh, we have Justin Norman on the phone and he's going to help me with the presentation management system. He's going to kind of go over the instructions on how to upload your presentation and Justin, if you will. Um, and, and again, this is going to be pretty short. Um, this, is a, this is literally what you're going to do in order to upload your presentation um, on the website. So this will be the web page that pre you are presented with when you log in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click either up here in the upper right or under my actions in the lower left, log in. You will log in to the website itself. And what you're going to see here is you'll see that we have now been presented with my presentations. So any presentations that you are assigned to as a presenter for HFMA are going to show up here. Um, and this one is Justin's excellent session. I, obviously this one I made up, but this will be your presentation for the show itself. So once you've clicked on that, you can scroll down and you can see your presentations. And here's Justin's presentation one. So it tells you that I'm a presenter. It gives you the start time and end time. Um, anything that you might have written in for the abstract for the presentation will be shown here. But the most important part is that you can upload your items. I have already uploaded my PowerPoint, so you can see that there's already a PowerPoint in here. If at any time you want to come in and upload a new PowerPoint, or PDF or however you're going to be submitting your, your presenter file, select presentation file. It's going to pop up and it's going to let me know that I already have a presentation file that exists here. So it's going to ask whether or not I want to overwrite it. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually load up my own presentation here from, and sorry, it's off the screen right now. But what it's showing me is that I'm actually able to choose any file from my computer here. And then I'll click Upload, and it's going to upload directly to the presentation page here. So literally all that I had to do was, was click on the link, log in, choose my presentation, which brings me to my presentation page, and then select the presentation file to upload. And once I'm done, I can scroll down here, and I can add any support files that I may have. And this, is, this kind of goes back to what Sue and Nora were talking about earlier, is if you have any files that you want associated with your presentation. So if it's a video that, let's say, is not on YouTube, if you have a local video file that you would like in your presentation, same format here. You just click on Add Support Files. You can upload it here. We'll keep your presentation and all of those files in one spot for you so that when you walk into your breakout room and you're going to present, those will already be there for you. Everything's ready. You're just going to have to walk up and start presenting. There's nothing for you to do. But we can also then review those files online. So I suggest uploading those as soon as you have them, if you do have them. Um, and at the bottom, we can click All Done. And we're taken back to the main page. Are there any questions about that process? And Nora, is there anything you'd like me to point out specifically here? So as I uh, was saying before, we are going to include instructions on how to log in um, on the speaker resource webpage. Again, mm -hmm. I believe that we were just going to use um, the speaker's email addresses. And then um, I, I believe it was going to be the password AC2019. Um, again, that will be on the speaker resource page later on today of uh, instructions how to upload it. And it looks like there's no questions coming in right now, Justin. Okay, perfect. Well, if there are any questions in the future, please feel free to reach out, and I'm happy to answer anything that comes in. Hey, Justin, this is Sue. Quick question. Do you yep. want to spend just a minute or two explaining kind of the overall presentation management system and how awesome it's going to be for presenters? Yeah, of course, most definitely. So, so the idea of this is we're, we're looking at the very beginning stage of the presentation management platform. Um, and that beginning stage is prior to the event, we, we take all of your presentations into the website here. So what we're doing on the back end is we're simply holding on to these. Um, Nora and Sue are able to go in and review your presentations. They can reach back out to you and, and help you with that review process. But ultimately, the idea here is that you are going to upload 
your finalized presentation once everything's said and done to this website, or you can come on site to the present or <clears throat> excuse me to the speaker ready room, which will be on site at the conference, um, and you can make your final adjustments to your presentation there as well. Um, but essentially, what all you would really need to do at the speaker ready room is walk in. You're going to type in your name to find yourself. Click on your presentation. It's going to automatically open. You can review your presentation and make sure that everything is set. You can make any edits that you would like to last minute in the speaker ready room right there. Um, but essentially, we are on site with all of your files, and we are automatically pushing them to the breakout rooms themselves. So when your turn to present comes, you're simply going to walk up to the machine. Your PowerPoint is preloaded. You're going to be on your title slide, and we're going to give you a clicker, or you can use the arrows on the screen to go back and forth and you're presenting. So there's really nothing that you need to do once you've gone through this review process and you've uploaded your finalized presentation. Everything is hands off. That's great. I we are really excited about that. And the other the other great piece in the in the background that the um, presentation management system allows us to do, I didn't mention that we have we will have at least one and more likely two what we're calling overflow rooms. Any of you who've presented or attended the annual conference before, we don't always know which sessions are going to be um, filled to capacity, um, must attend, all that good stuff. And we try our very best to anticipate that. But every once in a while, for some reason, something really strikes a chord with the crowd, and we've had to turn people away. We will have two rooms, one at least one, but probably two rooms set up that we're going to be able to almost instantaneously turn into overflow rooms. We'll be, we'll be able to tell the folks that are doing the scanning into sessions, our course coordinator partners, have them indicate to folks that the room is full, but they can go and listen and see the slide presentation in the particular rooms that we've set aside for that purpose. That's going to be a really neat experience, we think, for attendees. It's not going to be video, unfortunately, but it's going to be the um, presentation itself. It's going to be the um, slides and the audio that will be able to be fed in, and folks will be able to answer qu or ask questions of the presenters during that overflow session. So. Um, we're really excited about that, and that's what having this presentation management system allows us to do is, again, having the control where we can make those decisions and execute them instantaneously almost. Thank you, Justin. And so for our okay. final polling question, yeah. So just for fun, for those that do have their smartphones and want to participate in one more polling question, you can also type in the URL hfmaac.cns.io. And this is just going to be on your cell phone if you want to look at it. It says, describe one word of your feeling about pre presenting at HFMA annual conference. What would it be? Those do have it on. A couple have responded. This is going to be a word cloud, and unfortunately, I'm sorry that the um, platform that we're using right now wouldn't let us do a live poll. So that's why I'm just seeing if you guys would want to see it in your cell phones. But um, again, it's just a nice way to kind of include um, interactive polling into your session. All right, so we'll move on. And Sue? Yes, and that pretty much brings us to the end of our presentation. I don't know if there are any other questions that haven't been answered, but again, you've got information for Nora and for me, and we hope you will reach out. We know we're going to be in contact with many of you over the coming, oh, what are we, we're almost at the two-month out mark, a little bit before that. But we are very excited. The programming and the education are always the components of the annual conference that, that we hear the feedback on that are the most valuable to attendees. They really come for that education. They really want to learn about 
what is going to help them and their organizations, and we are excited to partner with you to make that a reality for them. So I always like to put Professor Hinkle up there, and I don't have audio on that, but all of you who have seen um, Frosty the Snowman know his phrase is, I've got to get busy, busy, busy. So we know you are all going to be busy in the next couple of months, as are we, and we're looking forward to our partnership and to your presentation. So again, feel free to reach out with any questions or any concerns that you have, and we will see you in person in June in Orlando. Nora, any final words? No, we're just very excited and look forward to um, everyone's sessions and their presentations and getting it all uploaded. Thank you very much.